Your Firestore security rules are one of the most important parts of your application. If you are developing and updating your security rules directly through the GUI in the Firebase console, it might be fair to say that you are playing with fire. A much safer approach is to develop your security rules locally with an automated test strategy. Now, I prefer the TDD approach, test driven development, but you can write your security rules and test them after as well if that is what you prefer doing. The important part here is that we have tests that we're running locally to make sure that our security rules are doing what we think they're doing or what we want them to do. Once we have created all of our tests and are satisfied that all of the requests are being allowed or denied appropriately, then we can deploy those rules live to the scary place. But now we have a suite of hopefully robust tests, making sure that everything works as we expect and to prevent us from breaking existing rules in the future. So there are three main ingredients for setting up a process like this. First, we should have a firestore.rules file locally in our project and deploy those rules using the Firebase deploy command rather than entering them directly into the Firebase console. We will need the Firebase emulator suite installed locally and this will allow us to simulate a Firestore database locally on our machine. And then we just need some regular old unit test files that use the testing framework of your choice. We can also use the Firebase rules unit testing helper library to help create the tests, but technically that is optional. I already have an example application set up with everything configured. Uh, this particular example is using Angular and Jest. And for a full detailed walkthrough of setting this up, I'll link to a tutorial in the description. It's a bit too long and probably boring to go through in this video. For now, we are going to take a look at what using this process actually looks like. So as you can see, I already have some security rules defined and I also have some tests for those security rules as well. So we have some basic boilerplate set up here that I talked through in depth in the full tutorial in the description. But the basic idea here is that we have a standard unit testing setup with a couple of extra features here. So at the top, we have a get Firestore and get admin Firestore. So what this is going to allow us to do is test operations against our Firestore database. And the admin Firestore is going to allow us to do things with admin access. So if we need to set up some test data before we run a test, we could just use the admin Firestore and this way we're going to have our writes or deletes or whatever we want succeed, even if our security rules don't allow that. And you can see here that we are supplying the get Firestore function here with an auth user. So we can even simulate a particular user being authenticated with Firebase and then test against that. So at the start of each test, we clear all the Firestore data and then we just have our individual tests here which mostly look more or less the same. We get the Firestore instance and then we test some operation. Some are a bit more complex, like this one here that requires using the admin Firestore to first set up a document with a particular UID that matches the authenticated user. But they all do more or less follow this similar sort of formula. We get our reference to the Firestore database. We do some operation and then we use the assert succeeds or, or assert fails methods, which are provided to us through Firebase rules unit testing to see if that operation would have passed or would have failed based on our security rules. So with our rules defined locally here and we have our unit testing file and I've also set up the local emulator. Again, details on how to do that are in the full tutorial. But what we can do is launch a new terminal in our project and we can start the emulators. So if we run Firebase emulated start, that is going to launch whatever emulators that we have installed and set up. So you can see that is uh, running now over port uh, 8080 for our Firestore database. And we can also go to this URL in our browser to see a GUI for our uh, emulated database. So once that emulator is running, we can open up a new terminal window and then we can run our test command, which for this project is set up as test rules. So I'll run that command and that's going to test these operations in my unit test file against that local 
uh, emulator and we can see that at the moment they are all passing. So that's great, but what if I want to add some new functionality now? Since I'm using the TDD approach, I'm going to write the test first. So at the moment, based on my security rules, a user can read their own messages, but they cannot update them. So let's say that I do want that specific functionality, but I also want to allow a user to delete their message. They're just not allowed to update it. To give you an analogy of a similar sort of behavior, that's kind of like what I think Twitter does with tweets. You can uh, create a new tweet and you can delete your tweet, but you can't edit it once it is up. So since I'm using the TDD approach, I'm going to first add a new test to my unit tests file here. And you don't have to do this. You might prefer a testing strategy where you create the security rule first and then create a test for it afterwards. This isn't a video about which particular testing strategy is appropriate here. So you can just do whatever you like. So I'm just going to add in my new test here and we'll just quickly talk through what it's doing. So we've created a new test that says it can delete own messages. And what we're doing is getting a reference to our Firestore database here and we're supplying our dummy user auth. And to quickly recap, that is an object with just a UID of user123 and an email of user at test.com. So this is going to simulate this user being authenticated and making a request against our database. We also get a reference to the admin Firestore because we're going to have to set up an example document that we're actually going to test this delete operation on. So in this case, we access a document in the messages collection and that document has an uh, ID of ABC123, which doesn't really matter. And the important part here is that in our test setup, we are setting the UID of this document to match our authenticated user. So this indicates that this user owns this document. And now we get into the actual uh, test portion of this. So we grab a reference to that same document from our just standard Firestore database reference here. And then we want to try and delete it. Now we are authenticated as this user, user uh, the user auth object. So when we call test.delete, that is going to attempt to delete that document as if it were authenticated as this user and it should succeed because this user is going to match the UID set on the document, which means they are allowed to delete it. So let's save that test and we are going to run it. And when we do run this, we should get a failure, which is what we want in a TDD approach. We want to write a test first, watch it fail and then make it succeed. So you can see here, we do have a failure now. If we go up, it says Firestore security rules can delete own messages. Uh, Firebase error, permission denied, false for delete at line six. So now if we go back to the Firestore rules file, we can take a look at line six and we can see that this request is getting denied here. So at the moment we are just doing a blanket deny on all write requests. And so that request to delete, which is a type of write is going to get denied. So now we need to try to modify our security rules so that that test passes. So we already have a user is author function defined to check if the authenticated user is the one who created the document that they are requesting. So this was originally intended for the read operation. I wanted to make sure they can only read their own documents. And so I created this function, but now I can reuse that also for this delete operation as well. So since we want to allow a delete, if the user is the author of that document, I can just add the delete rule here as well. I'm going to save that. And now if I run the tests again, we can see that all of the tests are now passing. So now that I'm satisfied with my rules, I'm happy with my tests and I'm confident that it's doing what it should be doing. Now I can just run Firebase deploy and that is going to deploy those rules live to my Firebase project as if I had entered it through the Firebase console directly. But this time we're doing it from our local machine with tests checking that everything is working. So although this approach doesn't guarantee that my security rules are correct, it's definitely going to help me sleep at least a little bit better at night. So if you want to see how to set up this entire process for yourself, uh, remember to check out the tutorial in the description for a full guide on setting it up. 
I know that this stuff can seem like a lot of extra work, but the peace of mind and extra security and confidence in your code that a testing approach like this provides is really worth it in my opinion. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please feel free to leave a like and subscribe and I will see you in the next one.